So I'm gonna assume that if you clicked on this video, you already know what StreamerBot is. It's an extremely powerful tool that will basically allow you to do whatever you want in your stream. That's really the easiest way to describe it. If you can think of something, StreamerBot can probably do it. But I can't lie to you, the UI is bullshit, especially if you're a new streamer. So to help you out, I've got five things that you can start doing right now that will make your life way easier. These are things that I use all the time to create all of the effects that you've probably seen in my Twitch stream, if you follow me on Twitch. Go do that if you haven't already. So stick with me. The UI is going to be really bland to look at, but I promise you, if you can master everything in this video, you are well on your way to becoming a streamer bot pro. Let's do a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that specializes in math, science, and computer science which is a type of science. I know there's a lot of you that are interested in tech and even though using StreamerBot doesn't require any programming knowledge whatsoever, learning even just the basics of coding can really help you elevate what you can do with your stream. And Brilliant puts a huge emphasis on learning by doing. They don't just throw a million meaningless lines of code at you. They put you through interactive real world programming examples that you have to critically think about. For example, they've got a course called Thinking in Code and before even showing you any code, they give you real problems problems for you to answer and diagrams and animations to help you visualize the concepts. Oh my god, this one looks like a Game Boy. Add more blocks from the toolbox. It's just that easy. You can try out Brilliant by heading to brilliant.org slash nutty. The link will be down below and the first 200 of you will get 20% off for an annual membership. Hey, quick update. So I filmed this video like three weeks ago and just this week StreamerBot announced a huge update that's coming very soon that shuffles a lot of the UI around. So by the time you watch this video, your StreamerBot may look very different than what you see today. I'm gonna to be making a video when that update does drop. So stay subscribed, be on the lookout because it's a really good update, trust me. So the first tip I have is to use the Q system. So if you've been using StreamerBot for a while, you've probably made a bunch of different effects and you may or may not want those effects to overlap each other. Let's say for instance that you set up two different channel point rewards and you follow my tutorial for how to set up Snapchat filters for your Twitch stream. Did, did you use that? Now let's say one person activates the first Snapchat filter and then a second person comes along and activates the second Snapchat filter. Well, you don't want the second person's redeem to cancel out the first person's redeem because then he's gonna start crying and then you have to become their babysitter and that's not fun. Stop crying, you little bitch. By default, everything already runs on the same queue, but you may not want that. Because let's say you have a third channel point reward and all that does is plays a sound effect. Well, if you already have a Snapchat filter enabled, you probably don't want to have to wait for that filter to turn off just so you can play your sound effect. It's probably okay for you to play the sound effect while that Snapchat filter is on. This is where the queuing system comes in. You just go over to the action queues tab, queues, and you can create as many queues as you want. Just make sure to turn on the checkbox that says blocking. And I'm gonna make a queue for my Snapchat filters because I don't want those effects to overlap each other. And then I'll make another queue for my sound effects. Then in the actions tab, you can assign each of your actions or your effects to those cues that you just created. It's a really easy way to control which effects can and can't overlap each other. Next tip is to use nested actions. So you've spent the past 20 hours making the craziest raid animation. It's your life's finest work of art, like rivals Michelangelo's David. But at the same time, you also want to automatically shout out the person that just raided you. And the way that you do that is just create two separate actions in the actions tab. One of them is your crazy raid animation and the second one just runs the shout out command then go into the events tab under raid and select the action that you want to run every time you get a raid and oh wait a minute streamer bot stupid because you can only select one action to run at least for right now uh, am i hinting something maybe i guess we'll have to find out I don't know why I'm talking like this. Anyway, yeah, you can only run one thing at a time. So it's either your crazy animation or your shout out command. You can't do both at the same time. So a workaround is to go into the actions tab, create a new action. And within that, you can run 
other things. So you can run your raid animation and your shadow command and as many other things that you want. And that new nested action is what you're going to run every time you get a raid. Now I would recommend turning on the concurrent flag when you make the action, because that just means it's gonna run all the things inside that action simultaneously at the same time. Those two words mean the same thing. Next tip is to make use of variables. So we're gonna go with that raid example again. Moist Critical decides to bless you with his 10,000 viewers. And that is the story of the stolen jambalaya recipe. That's about it, see ya. You can set up an action that automatically types out in Twitch chat, Moist Critical just raided the stream with 10,000 viewers, where Moist Critical is the name of the person that just raided you, and 10,000 is the number of people that came in with the raid. Or a much simpler example is when someone follows you. You can make it type in Twitch chat, Kevin just followed you, where Kevin is the person that followed you. And they've got variables for pretty much everything you can think of. You can grab the number of months someone just subbed for, the type of sub, whether it's a prime sub or a tier one sub. You can grab the title of every Twitch pro that gets created. You can even grab the name of every person that you ban and then use that information for whatever crazy animation that you want. You can also create your own variables too. So a simple example is a death counter. You can keep track of how many times that you die. And then whenever you die, you can make a chat command for your mods to type in, you just died and you suck and that will increment the counter and that number will save the next time you start streaming. So if you end the stream with 69 deaths, you will start the next stream with 69 deaths. And using variables is very easy. You just type in the name of the variable with percentage signs on either side. So in the example of when someone follows you, you can send a Twitch chat message and in the chat message, you would write, Kevin just followed you, but in place of the word Kevin, you would put percent user percent. And that'll make sure every time you get a follow, it uses the name of the person that followed you rather than the word Kevin. In the example of the death counter, we can make this really easily by just creating a new action. And what we want this action to do is just keep track of a variable that we're gonna call death, and we're going to add one to that every time we run this action. So you add a sub action called global set, and we're gonna name the variable whatever you want. I'm gonna name this one deaths, and we're gonna change the type to increment because we want to add one to this variable. And then we just type the number one here. Immediately after that, we're going to do a global get because we want to get the value of this death variable. So we're gonna type in the name of the variable that we want in these two fields, which we're gonna type in deaths because that's what we named it. And then we're going to set a default value of zero. That just means we're gonna set a value to the variable if this variable doesn't already exist. And now we can use this deaths variable in our action. So we could do something like send a Twitch message and that message will say, you have died deaths in percentage times. Just go ahead and make a new chat command to run our new action. And every time we run it, the number of deaths should increase every single time we run the action. Now, while we're on the topic of variables, you might've been wondering how I even knew what variables I had access to. Like in the example of the follow event, how did I know to type in user to get the username to appear? Or if I get rated, how do I know what the variable name is for the number of people in the raid? And the answer to that is the action history tab. Now this tab is going to be your best friend because this tells you all of the variables that you have access to for every single action that you run. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to make a new action and we're not actually gonna put anything into this. We're not gonna program or do anything here, but we're going to attach this new action to the raid event. And then I'm gonna simulate a raid event by using the test button inside of the raid tab. You can also just raid yourself and it will work too. And once you do that, the new action that we just created will appear inside of that history tab. And if you right click and go into inspect variable it will list out all of the variables that you could potentially use along with their values. And all I have to do is browse for that list and I can see, oh, the username is right here and the variable name is username. 
And if I wanna get the number of viewers that came with the raid, I can just use the variable that's called viewers. And now that I know what variables I have access to, I could just go ahead and use them in whatever animation I wanna do. So in this example, we're just gonna send a simple Twitch message that says, user has just rated the stream for viewers viewers. And every single type of event is going to have a list of different variables. So if you run a channel point reward, or whenever you run a Twitch poll, whenever you get an ad, run a channel point prediction, all of those different events have their own different list of variables that you have access to. And there's just, there is just an overwhelming amount of data that you wouldn't even believe. You just have to test it out and look in the action history tab to find out which variables you can use. I'm gonna do something I've never done in the stream before. I'm gonna give you guys some homework. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make an action that sends a Twitch message every time you get an ad, but I want the Twitch message to have the number of seconds that the ad runs for. So I'm not gonna tell you how to do that. I just wanted to see if you guys can figure it out yourself. And when you figure it out, go and tweet it at me and send me a screenshot so I know that you did it right. Or just tell me in the comments that you were able to figure it out. Because if you can do that, that means that I'm a good teacher and if you can't do it, then that's a failure in my part and I need to be able to explain things better. Final tip, use OBS events to automate your stream. Anytime anything happens in OBS, like you hit the start recording button, you switch scenes, you turn on a filter, you turn on studio mode, Every time you do anything, it sends an event over to StreamerBot. And you can use that event to run anything that you want. A really basic example of this is you can set it up so that every time you hit the recording button, it automatically plays a sound effect so that you know that the recording started. I'm letting you know that you are now recording. The recording session is now over. In my stream, I've got a bunch of different examples for this. So for instance, whenever I'm in my intro and outro scenes, I have it set up to automatically turn off all of my channel point rewards. So that way my viewers don't run channel point rewards when they can't even see them. And then as soon as I change to another scene that isn't my intro or outro scene, it automatically detects that and StreamerBot will tell Twitch to just turn off my channel point rewards. I also made this little widget that shows a red little plug indicator on the top left of my stream that every time I start dropping frames in OBS, it shows the little plug icon in the corner. And so that's like an indication to my viewers that if they ever see stuttering in my stream, that the problem was with my internet and not you guys. And if you want that widget, you can get that over on my Patreon at the tier two level or higher. Thanks for giving me money. You can even automatically send a Discord message every time you hit the start streaming button. So you don't have to set up like a Discord bot to do that. You can do that all locally on your own PC. It's very robust. You can attach any action you want to any OBS event. You just go into the stream apps tab Click on your OBS connection there, and in the bottom half of the screen, you're gonna see a big window, and this is where you can add all your different OBS events. For example, I'm going to right click and add, and I want something to happen every time I hit the recording button. So I would just select from the dropdown, recording started, and then I would attach any action I want to that event. And every OBS event has their own variables too. So if you're switching scenes, it tells you which scene that you're switching to, which you can then use as a variable for whatever you want. How do you find out what variables you want? You go back to that action history tab. It's just, it's all, it all melds together. And it's, awesome. Anyway, I hope you guys have fun with that. Let me know if that helped you out at all. And uh, don't forget, follow me on Twitch because I stream three nights a week. Uh, go join the Discord if you need any help. Uh, give me money on Patreon because I'm trying to buy a 3D printer and I want you guys to pay for it. Yeah, never mind. I already bought it. Look, I'm, I'm printing a coaster. And remember, everyone at tier two and higher will get access to all my widgets like that plug indicator widget that I was talking about before. Uh, if you guys want that widget, then it's, it's, uh, it's $10 for all of them every month. But you only need to do it for one month because 
that's expensive to do that every month, even though some of you, anyway, I'm gonna go now, I'm just wasting time. See you guys, I'll see you guys next week.